All right, in, in this next part, we're going to move on from the sand dollar, and we're going to use the marquee selection tool, which is this one right here. Okay, so it's probably going to default right now to the rectangular marquee, um, but because we are going to take this little plate of shells and move it in place the B place on this, uh, we want to take the elliptical marquee tool. So you want to click and hold that and then select elliptical marquee. And for this, let's blow this up kind of a little bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> all right, and you can use your zoom tool if you want. Uh, you can use your trackpad, however you want to do it. Um, if you're using a mouse, you can use the key combination to zoom also. Okay, so uh, now that we've got this blown up, mine's blown up probably about 415% or so. And the reason I'm doing that kind of largely is because it's easier to really see the details of the edges better. Now with the marquee tool, um, especially with the elliptical marquee tool, one of the challenges is when you click and hold and drag, let's say that you want to try to get this, I'm going to start down here and I click and I hold and I drag, you see what happens is that I don't get it exactly in the right spot. So a lot of times what people do is, okay, well they'll deselect and they'll say, okay, well, I started too close to the edge. Maybe I need to come out here. And they'll sit there and they'll try to get it right. And it's really hard to get it right, you know. And so the the trick that, there are a couple of tricks. One is that you can just simply click and drag anywhere like I just did and try to get the approximate shape. And then I hold down space bar now. I haven't let up off of my, my mouse key. So I'm holding down the space bar and I am still holding my mouse key. And now I can move my mouse around while I hold that space bar down and try to see like how big it needs to be. And I can go, okay, well, it needs to be that much bigger. I'm not letting up off my mouse. I'm letting up off the space bar and now it'll let me keep drawing it. Okay. And so I can see that, you know, it, it's, it's a certain size. It's probably, you know, like that, that might be okay. All right. I can sort of probably live with that kind of, and then if I, I'm not sure like if I'm a little bit afraid over on the right side, if it's grabbing, you know, too many of the white pixels, I can also, uh, I can pull it in a little bit, hold down space bar, and then move it over with my mouse, just a hair. And then what I can do is let up off the space bar. Now I can let up off my mouse key, and there's my selection. Now I could make another selection also, um, and, you know, this one might not be so good. There are a couple things I want you to notice. One of the things that I didn't do is up here where it says feather, I didn't feather it, okay? So I could either, I can leave my feather at zero or I can retroact and retroactively feather it like I showed you before where you go to select and you go to modify and then you can add a feather of like one or two or however many pixels. Um, otherwise, you can also choose the feather in advance of making the selection, but the thing is, once you've made the selection, you cannot just click right here and change it retroactively. This is only going to be good for new selections. So if I change this option up here, all right, it's only good for new selections. I cannot change this right now and have it apply to my existing selection. So I could deselect this, and there's also something else I want to show you as well. Um, I, if I deselect this, um, I'm going to lose my selection. So let me show you a really quick trick. Just the book, again, it doesn't show you this yet. But if I go up and I say select, and then I go to save selection, I can call this um, shells, plate of shells, shells one, okay? So that's my first plate of shells selection. I can say, okay. And now if I deselect and I do a bunch of other, let's say I do a bunch of other stuff and I really don't want to go back in my history because I'll lose other things that I did. What I can do now is I can just merely, I can simply go up to here, say select, load, sele oops, let's try that again. Load selection. And then I choose where it says channel. I choose plate of shells one okay and then it loads it for me now the trick about this is that it's only going to ever load the selection in exactly the same place on this file you you know it's not gonna like if i change the scale of this object the selection isn't going to change its scale if i move this object somewhere the selection will still load right here 
All right, so that's a, a good thing to remember and understand too, is that a selection will always, when you reload it, it'll always be the same exact size and in the same place as you originally made it. So if you start moving other things around or changing scale, then that selection is suddenly not as useful anymore. All right, so now I can deselect and not have to worry if I don't make a better selection, but I'm gonna try to make a better selection. Uh, in a different way. So I'll, I'll still use my elliptical marquee tool. And one of the things that's kind of cool is that if you want to start from the center of something, because sometimes it's easier to estimate where the center of a circle is than it is to estimate where it's going to draw out from the edge. So I'm going to estimate that my center is probably somewhere in here. And if I click my mouse, so I'm clicking and holding my mouse right now, and then I hold down the Option or Alt key on Windows, it's Alt on Mac, it's uh, option and then I start to draw it draws out for me okay so it's gonna draw out for me and I can start to kind of adjust that and you can see already that it's a lot closer uh, than it was originally and so if I want to try to take that use that trick um, and if I let up off option see what it does it like it draws it from the edge so I'm gonna put option again so it's drawing from the center and now if I click my uh, if I click my uh, spacebar, all right, I can still move it around while the spacebar is being held down, all right, and I can try to get it more centered since I'm still using this option, op, you know, or alt tool. Now I let off my spacebar, but I'm still holding option and the mouse. Now I can adjust it, and it's more centered, and I think that my selection is probably going to be better. Now you'll notice if you look closely here. On the right side, if I were to let up, let's just go ahead. I'll I'll let up off of my uh, not option key first. I want to let up off of my mouse key, and then off of option. Otherwise, it'll just jump back to, you know, drawing from the other outside edge if I let up off of option first. So make sure you let up off of your mouse first to confirm the selection. And you'll notice that it might be a little bit too far over here to the left, and then. On the, on the right side, it's it's like kind of not getting all the pixels. So what I can do at this point is I can use my arrow keys for nudging. So I can just nudge them over like one or two pixels at a time, all right? And then if you want to nudge, use your nudge key to nudge multiple pixels over at, at once, usually in multiples of five. Then you can hold down the shift key while you nudge and you see it goes many more pixels. Actually, that looks like it's more like 10 pixels or something. So you can nudge, and sometimes that's kind of a nice thing if you want to just move something out of the way, but you want to do it in a very measured way, so you're not just using your move tool like with your hand. You can kind of go one, two, three, four, five, right, and do whatever you need to do, and then move it back one, two, three, four, five by holding that shift key. All right, so I'm, I'm also happy with this selection as well. Now what I can do is... I can tell you right now that that's going to be a sharp edge selection because I have no feather on it, right? And you, like I said before, if you wanted to make that with a feather beforehand, you could have added one pixel before you created the selection. Um, now, here's what I like to do. This is my decision, so this is entirely up to you how you want to do this. I find that whenever I go to save selections, the problem with saving a selection with a feather is that you can sometimes make a very complex selection and if you have the feather enabled here there are a couple of things that can sometimes be problems if you have the feather enabled first of all that complex selection that you've just made it can never not have a feather right it's it, you can't unfeather it you can always add a feather later but you can't take a feather away without actually going back and modifying the selection through this thing called select and mask and sometimes you still can't get it exactly the way you want it. So I typically like to make a lot of my selections without a feather first because I can always go back and add it later. And then if I save my selection without a feather, I can sometimes use that to my advantage to sometimes I want to save the selection with a feather or I want to add a bigger feather or a smaller feather and I can try different things but if you add that feather first, you can't undo it. The other problem with, I find, for me personally, is that putting a feather right here on one of your main selection tools, like one of the marquees that you use all the time, is that it will remember the last setting that you chose if you don't reset your Photoshop preferences every time you open it. And so if you go and 
you forget to, to remove the feather, then you can go and make a whole bunch of selections and your, your edges will be fuzzy. And then you'll have to undo them and redo them um, by taking this off if you don't, you know, if you want something that's completely sharp and crisp. So I personally don't love using this. That's my choice. Okay. Um, okay. So, but anyway, what I can do at this point, if I want to go ahead and add a feather, is that I can go up here to select and I'll modify and I'll say feather and I'll feather it by one pixel. Okay. And then I'm going to zoom back out. I'll use my zoom uh, and my alt option. I'll just click a few times. And then you can see that we're supposed to be putting it here in this area B. Okay. So what I'll do here is uh, if I want to use my move tool, I could just take it and move it. That's one option. Okay. Uh, the other option is I could duplicate it by holding down Option or Alt. You see I get that double-headed arrow right here. And I could drag it up there and then it would duplicate it. But the problem is that, like I said before, if you look at my layers, I would like to have a second layer so it's independent. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to copy it with a Control or Command C as in copy. Oops. Oh, and look what it says. It warned me. Let's try that again. See, it says it can't complete the copy command because the selected area is empty. And you might look at that and go, what are you talking about? There's a shell, a plate of shells. Well, look at, I have sand dollar selected right now. It's trying to select empty, like basically empty uh, space right here. And I need to select my original layer zero, okay? That is where the sand dollar, uh, excuse me, that's where the actual plate of shells is. So now if I hit command, or control C, <clears throat> I can go ahead and paste it. And now it just made a new layer called layer one. I'll double click that and I'll rename that and I'll call it plate of shells. Okay. <clears throat> and now if I take my move tool, I can happily move it up there. And you can see because of what I did, I feathered that edge. It's not too, too sharp and it actually looks pretty, pretty decent. In my opinion, I think it would be too crisp uh, otherwise. And again, that's up to you. You can make it however you want. Okay, and so again, this is a little different than the book showed you. I made a layer, I feathered the edge in a different way and so on. Um, <clears throat> but that shows you uh, a little bit about what you can do with that elliptical marquee tool. All right, and then, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next, uh, next demonstration where I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of some tools using like the, the rectangular marquee along with say the magic wand tool for instance. Okay.